Heschel, but it could be Abraham. Yeah, Joshua Abraham Heschel. Yeah, he was a rabbi. All right, he's actually a rabbi that's referenced by a lot of people because he was a pretty big known guy and said a lot of amazing things. But uh, I actually went to a. Uh, he uh, he wrote a book. Uh, had something to do with with uh, gods and prophets, and I can't remember the title of the book. Right, but he wrote a book. The book, bottom line was I actually went to this this speaking event by a Catholic priest about this rabbi. The whole point was just to understand a more open-minded view of the Jewish religion, of who this guy was, of what he had to say. But what the 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 more to- the, the the point of the talk was more about the the incongruency, the conflict that prophets had to sit with. Um, defining prophets is like Muhammad, and prophets is like, if we just call Jesus a prophet for now, we're just going to call, like people like that who, who sit with these incongruencies, they recognize how things should be. They understand what needs to happen to get there. But it conflicts. It conflicts with their with, with their being, there's there's a conflict of being. Like, they sit in these opposing views and just go, I don't know. I'm just going to sit here and marinate in these. And that's that's what I do every day before a show and after a show and with you guys. Hi, John Lewis. And and the reason I'm going off about all this stuff, okay, is because we, we are all faced with that same choice right now. Yesterday, I said a lot of really, really extreme, harsh, radical things, right? We're going to talk about those things because my goal really was to drive passion, was to drive people to go, wow, man, and it worked. <laughs> so we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Um, but I, I, my, my point is that we are all in conflict right now because what's going on in our world, what's going on with our government is causing us to, to go, this isn't right. There's a no logic here, and it's happening all around us, and we need to figure out how to address it. Censorship. We are, we are watching censorship occur on the web, but we, we can't do anything about it. And that's really what I was angry about yesterday is what do we do? How do we fight back against digital censorship? What do we do? Right? Sitting on a bridge isn't going to help. Walking down the street isn't going to help. Holding up a picket sign isn't going to help. I'm not saying that these things don't help the movement. Of course they do. But they don't do jack shit for the digital realm. How do we fight the digital war? That's what I want to know. Occupy Anonymous, that's why I call on you to help me figure out how to hijack a primetime network stream because I personally think that is a beautiful act of civil disobedience. And we're going to talk about what civil is defined as in a minute. But let's talk about what really matters, okay? Um, where did it go? Where did it go? A couple things, but the, the big one that I want everybody to know about, the title of the, the, title of the card was uh, uh, Justice for Flint, which I wasn't even aware was going on, so I'm really sad. Uh, Sean, were you aware that Justice Flint was happening before yesterday? All right. Those of you in the audience, anybody else hear about it? And I'm, I'm reading some some uh, uh, comments here. Joe Stein should come out for Bernie. Yeah, probably. Uh, she's wait. She's waiting to see. She's waiting to see you. She's she's playing the game there. Uh, I really think uh, I've seen that hashtag. Please don't say fight. Why? I don't understand. I am fighting for freedom. Fighting what? What? I don't understand why we have a problem with the word fight, folks. Are we that afraid? This is a revolution. Even in passive resistance, you fight. I don't understand why there's this resist. No, I'm not. I'm not resisting. Resist implies this defense. I'm resisting you. No, I am pushing back. That's a fight. I'm not resisting anymore, okay? A resistance means we're resisting the establishment. I resist you. Fuck that. I am fighting the establishment. I may not be fighting them with my fist, okay? Because fighting them with my fist does no good when I'm fighting a giant machine. But let's use the words that we mean. I mean fight. I want to fight for this country. I want to fight for democracy. I want to fight to save them both. 
please don't tell me not to use words. I, I, I just, I, I, you, I, we need, we need, uh, Sean has no volume. Oh, shit. shit. Sean, my bad. Say hi to everybody. Hey. I'm still here. That's what I get for using, that's what I get for using the wrong, uh, uh, the wrong audio thing. I told you audio was weird. Now maybe we'll be able to tell if Sean is actually, uh, in sync or out of sync, folks. Okay, well, I hadn't said anything too important yet, so it's good. No worries. Alright, there we go. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. Let's, let's, let, thank you for letting me know. Thank you for letting me know about that. And that's, and that's it. We are on the offense. I just want to say that. This is, this is, you know, we're going to talk about that what passive resistance means. We're going to talk about what civil disobedience means and that it's time to wake up. The government, your government and your your media, the established media have been telling you, calm down, stay calm, everybody stay calm. Let's go watch this video. Let's go watch the Osmond family Christmas. Stay calm. Right? That's, no, fuck staying calm. Right? There's, the, the, staying calm does not imply lack of love. Okay, I, I want to make I want to make sure everybody understands that by saying we're going to fight, that does not change the fact that this is about a love train. Okay, uh, you you can you can love the people and fight for your country. I can love the people, but I will fight the cop that tries to arrest me for any civil disobedience I do. Okay, I will fight back because that's my right. That's my right. Right? I'm not going to lay down and let some guy with a badge and a gun put handcuffs on me. No, I will not. When it comes time to it, and let's, shit, we might as well just go here. We might as well just go here. Everything I said yesterday, there was a lot of people that were upset about what I said. There was a lot of people that said I needed to just delete the video. There was a lot of other people that said some very uh, great comments, and I want to talk about that. We had a lot of, we had a very, a lot of varying comments, all right? This was from uh, Blue Venus. John, your broadcast today uh, has been one of the most inspiring, passionate, and feet to the fire videos I've seen in a long time. Thank you. I'm also extremely scared not only about what our country, where our country is headed, but the entire world. Now, that's that's one of many that said similar things. I was actually expecting quite a different reaction from yesterday. I I spent a lot of time marinating in my own statements from yesterday. But I meant every single one of them. And I made sure of that over and over again. Yep, yep, yep. I don't say shit I don't mean. I meant that shit. So let's talk about that. Because John Wick said, hey, listen to what Bernie has to say. Which I always want to listen to what Bernie has to say. And he sent me a link. He said, you should really get rid of that video. Unlisted. I thought about that. I thought about unlisting I've thought about that with a couple videos. A couple videos where I just went insane. I'm like, yeah, maybe we'll do that. But it's on record. I want the record to be there that I was angry. That I was that psycho insane angry at the government. At what's going on. Right? Because somebody's got to see that. Somebody's got to go, wow, that's wholly inappropriate anger. You bet it is. I want everybody to turn that around. Hey, my government just carpet bombed Cambodia. Killed 100,000 civilians. Wow, that seems wholly inappropriate. I want you to turn it around on the government. Every time you think, geez, I'm being a little, little, you know, this is disobedient. I'm, I'm, I shouldn't be doing this. The government's going to have a problem. That's going to freak out some people. That's going to make people uncomfortable. I want you to think about what our government does every fucking day to us, to the people. Bernie Sanders' movement is about changing that government, is about bringing everybody together. That has to mesh with the fact we are not going to bring the establishment down by hugging them. The establishment builds weapons of war for a living. The establishment sells F-15s to Saudi Arabia to bomb children. The establishment puts chemicals in our food because it makes money. The establishment is not looking out for our best interest. Our government is not a good government right now. I am fighting against an oligarchy. I am fighting against a gross abuse of power. And the love that we feel with Bernie and the love that we feel together stays. But when I turn around to look at the establishment, 
I will greet them with my anger. I will greet them with the truth. I will greet them with truth to power. And if need be, I will greet them with force. Because this is not a resistance. This is an offensive to take back my country, hopefully with the election process. But as we are starting to see, folks, you don't have censorship. You don't have censorship, blatant censorship in the digital era happening. A blackout in media on the candidate the people want. Think back. Think back, people. Think back at what has been done, about the freedom of speech we hold so dear, and what, and the, what the media has done to that freedom of speech. If that does not piss you off, then you are absolutely naive and ignorant of what has been removed from your rights. You don't get it. And that is why I will fight. That is why I will use force if necessary. That's why John Witness, what Bernie said in the video with Colbert, Colbert said, well, you know what John F. Kennedy said, blah, 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 revolutionary, and I don't even know what the quote is, something about fighting. The reality of what happens, and Bernie said, you know what, I hope not. I hope not. The last thing he had to say wasn't, well, we, I'm certainly not going to condone violence. He said, I hope not. Because he knows Bernie's not a dumbass. Bernie knows that while we are going to do our best to do this with love and peace and kindness and the election process, when it comes down to it, we may end up in handcuffs. I may end up in jail. We all have to be willing to make those choices, to cross over that uncomfortable line in order to do what we need to do to take this country back. That is what I advocate. That is what yesterday was about. Personally, for me, I see no problem with hauling a CEO out of his office onto the street to listen to the people tell them
find out what you're doing and where you are, John. When the push comes to shove and we're out there in the streets, they're going to want to know where all of us are and we're going to be communicating uh, uh, digitally. And so it, it it, it's not to say that that's actually going to happen, but that's the, and I hate to use this term, but the slippery slope that the government has already proven that they'll take advantage of when we start letting those freedoms go, which we already have with the Patriot Act and so on and so forth. Yep. Yep. It's just another step in that direction. Yep. So, uh, 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 so well, I agree, I agree with you. Patriot Act, the NSA, PRISM. Come on, folks. Yep. Do we remember these things? Do we remember these things? No. They don't want you to. <laughs> uh, so first of all, I, I don't. I hope everybody can hear fine. Apparently, we've been having audio issues. Let me know, guys. Uh, if Sean was heard, I hear it's much better, but I don't know. Is it better on both of us when it gets to me? Are we still having this stuttering thing going on? Very sorry about that. Uh, Sam, we sounded like a demon. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Sorry, folks. Sorry, folks. What Sean was saying is absolutely right, though. Uh, we, the, the media, the news media guys, doesn't they don't they don't keep putting these things in your face, right? The media doesn't keep telling you about the methane leak in Aliso Canyon. The media doesn't keep telling you about the fact that Exxon knew forty years ago that we, they were killing the planet. The media doesn't keep telling you any of these things. Keep telling you about the NSA and Prism. Keep telling you about uh, the fact that all of the Edward Snowden documents that continue to be released show an egregious abuse of power against the people. And you better believe there's stuff out there we don't know about. There's things they're sitting on, uh, similar to Flint, similar to the gas leak. I yes. mean, there's things they've fucked up and they're not going to tell us. And it takes real investigative journalism to go out and find those things. And yes. that's something that's uh, lacking in this, you know, in this country because they're all basically essentially bought and paid for. So yes. they're not yes. going to go out and find something incriminating against the people paying their checks. Well, it, exactly. Uh, case in point, the, two, the 2011 article that where Bloomberg got the free, from the Freedom of Information Act, we found out in 2011 that in 2008, we gave an additional $7.7 .7 trillion to the banks without letting anybody know. We're just like, here, here's some more money. Well, whatever. American people will never know. And by the time they do, what, what are they going to do about it? Right? Freedom of Information Act. Around 2011, somebody will pull that up, write an article, and they'll they'll make a stink out of it, and it'll get buried. It's exactly what happened. Oh, oh, we gave 7.7 .7 trillion dollars. Where did those trillion, Where did that money come from? Where did that money come from, John? I have no idea. Where did the 7.7 .7 trillion dollars come from that we gave to the? Nobody knows. Did anybody ask? Did anybody say how are we going to pay that back? What what's the deal? No, no, it's gone. It's gone. You know. Yeah. Try to keep it out of sight, out of mind. You know, and, you know that's a common trick. You know, if there's legislation to be passed that they think is gonna be, you know, have people up in arms, you wait till Friday afternoon. You know, you yep. wait till the long weekend. I mean, there's things. It, at some point, you obviously have to recognize that these are deliberate, planned out things that they do to try and keep our voices silent and not in the know. You know, as long as we're kept in the dark and we have you know, the Super Bowl on to keep us uh, our attentions, then, you know, they hope things won't get too riled up. Yeah, every now and then, right. they'll try and get behind the grassroots uh, candidate, but we'll push through, you know, the, the status quo, and everyone will settle down again, because we know that in, you know, off election years, people basically don't show up at all. And the whole point we've been saying over and over again this year is that we need young voter turnout, and we're not seeing it, and it's like, well, what the hell do you have to do to wake people up in this country. I don't know. It, I don't know. it almost makes you, it almost makes me pessimistic about the whole thing. It does. It, it does. It does. It's, it's well, <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm, I'm reading some of the comments they're agreeing with you. We're talking about, uh, we bailed out Wall Street, then Bill and Hillary made their fortune from it, exactly. Uh, uh, 7.7, .7, so the 7.7 .7 trillion came from Social Security that they want to destroy. Oh, right. Okay. That makes sense. Apparently, that's <laughs> what somebody's saying here. I'm just reading your comments, guys, folks. Uh, so, uh, George saw a rerun of uh, 2010 Goldman Sachs uh, uh, Power and Peril show. Everybody should see it. That sounds good. Uh, Warren, uh, it's, uh, Warren's not... Warren can... So, so by the way, uh, somebody else officially announced, Alan Grayson, who hadn't really officially announced for Bernie, officially announced for Bernie today. All right, so that just came out. There, there's, there's endorsements coming all over the place. What, 
what we, we didn't really talk much about what it means, but the, the, the Tulsi Gabbard announcement is huge. That's ridiculous. That, if, if, not, if anything says, hey, the DNC is wholly corrupt, it's a person having to quit <laughs> to go do what they think is right for the Democratic Party. Right. And willing to quit somewhat. I mean, that just shows you the character of her, where she's willing to give up her job and go out there as saying she's against, you know, uh, the establishment. So essentially, you know, this could ruin her career. You know, I'm sure there's people pulling her aside saying, make sure you know what you're doing, because who knows how this is going to be taken, you know. So, uh, it, it, you know, it took a lot of courage to come out there and know, you know, that that's what you believed in and that you were gonna, you were ready to come out and speak up. And, I, you know, I think we'll only see more of that. We've been saying that for a while now, but it, it, it continues to happen. People slowly coming out. Now you're seeing people hint at it even, you know, like right. the Oscars, for instance. Right. But here, so, so I didn't watch the Oscars. And we're going to talk about it. I didn't watch the Oscars because I wasn't interested in seeing a bunch of rich white folk hand out awards to a bunch of other rich white folk, which yeah. is basically what the Oscars has become. I, I am sad because I wasn't aware of this. All right. And, and I wasn't even aware of Revolt.tv, so I feel really dumb and naive. But uh, Justice for Flint, this event was going on with some stars. I have a, I have a picture. We want to thank these actors and actresses for taking the time and musicians for taking the time to do something that actually matters. Instead of handing out some gold stupid awards to each other, they actually went somewhere where it matters. And this is what matters. Justice for Flint. Trying to get something done, trying to get the government off its ass. This is this again, folks. This is when I talk about what do we do here? What action should we take to get the government to realize that if they don't take action soon, we're going to take some more drastic action? That's the question. Is action? There's been a lot of talk. Where's the action? Right? Uh, uh, what what's his name? Uh, uh, Bernie, Bernie the other day was asking in the Flint form, where are the water buffaloes? You know where the water buffaloes are? They're in packages called Nestle Water, bottled up from Lake Michigan on, for free, sold back fucking government in the city of Flint. That's, that's what's happening here. That's why there's no water buffaloes that should just suck up the water from Flint, pure, or from, from Lake Michigan, run it through some purifiers and deliver it to the town of Flint, right? Or let's just build a fucking pipe from Lake Michigan straight to Flint and call it good. Oh wait, didn't they have one of those already? They they, they had they, they had one from the uh, Detroit River, right? And then they diverted it. That was it. I'm sorry, but uh, while Nestle cleans up on free water, they put it in plastic and then give it back to Flint. That's why there's no water buffaloes there, Bernie, because Nestle needed to get in on the action, right? Fuck the Oscars. I agree, Crunch. That should be a hashtag today. We'll see how long it takes Twitter to, to silence that. You know. That's, it's, 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 we laugh at it, Sean, but it's not funny. Well, it's funny are. because, uh, well, yeah, go no, ahead. Go ahead. Sure go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, it, it, it's, it's funny just in the fact that, uh, I mean, it's, it, it's almost unbelievable to me. I guess I was still at a point in, in watching politics where you're, you're still hoping people will wake up and pull the wool off their eyes. And the reason they do all these things, I, I assume is because they know that they work. They know that Twitter has um, an actual uh, pull when it comes to society and what we're talking about and what the news is even talking about. I mean, now we get to the point where these news shows are talking about what's happening on Twitter. And it is, it's insane. And they're taking that power, of course, and they're, they're, they're going to do their own thing with it and they're going to follow their, their, their own special interests. And that's... You know, disquieting, um, you know, Hillary, you know, anti-Hillary hashtags and, you know, suppressing other ones. And, uh, you know, I think it's just, it's, a, it's almost like awe-inspiring that this is, I mean, I, I've read 1984. We're not there yet, but holy crap, man, we're totally becoming, you know, going down this road where they're scaring us so much. You know the government thing. They're scaring us so much that we're like, okay, you do whatever you want, keep us safe. Uh, you know, put the people in power that are going to work. You know, we know. You know, obviously the people don't know what's good for us, so suppress the Bernie Sanders stuff and suppress the anti-Hillary stuff because you guys know best, right? And that's what it is. It's that big brother kind of aspect. Like we know what's what's good for you, and it's so weird because then you have another party who you have some members 
preaching small government, but, you know, I mean, it doesn't always work that way. Oftentimes, big government shrinks government. Uh, you know, the more taxes you have can actually, you know, increased taxes can actually shrink government, you know, and anti-monopolies, which in essence are, you know, controlling government, but also keeps government in check, you know. So, I mean, there's all these things they try and spin, and, you know, I'll reiterate again, you know, you have all these uh, pop culture things taking our, taking away our, uh, you know, taking our interests instead of where our interests should lie, which is making sure we're well aware of what's going on, what the government's doing, what our rights are, and being fully, um, you know, fully aware of how important voting is and getting out there and voting off election years, every year, every time, municipal as well, you know, local, you know, voting is just abysmally low. And you, know, that you don't get anyone out to the polls then. So I think that's just important to keep, you know, on these shows, telling people, hey, you got to keep, if not optimistic, at least keep uh, uh, the, the, the faith or the passion of wanting to create something good for this world and for these people, you know, for the, everyone, you know, uh, the, not just in this country, but when this country does something, it it it, it expands across the globe. And uh, yeah, we affect, we're the one that affects everybody else. And that's yep. that's, the, the, that's the, the problem there is that we 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 need to pull in the right direction in order to make this work, folks. Uh, we we have to. I just realized we had comments. Thank you to the people who are doing comment pod. I didn't even bother to check live production. I'm guessing that's Nico and everybody else. I'm so distracted. I I, I I I'm sorry, guys. I've been really distracted because I've really been trying to figure out what the hell we're doing here. Right? It's it's. Uh, uh, I've got some other news articles we want to talk about, but uh, when I started this in June of last year. I mean, we've had a, almost a complete change of personnel. I don't know how many people have been with us from the beginning since June or remember what we were doing way back then. Uh, I, made a, I made a statement to everybody in June that, you know, things would be definitely be more stable and all figured out by November, and that was when I needed to get a job. <laughs> that, was, that was my... It's like, you know... By November, this will be a full uh, operating nonprofit, and we'll have everything figured out, and we'll have staff and stuff going. And uh, <laughs> that hasn't happened. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the reality of a political revolution, right? So uh, you know, I, I'm just I, I've been lately. What I've been doing is trying to figure out what we're going to do to move forward, how we're going to move this stuff forward, and uh, uh, and and to uh, because of yesterday, I've kind of. It's things that needed to happen are going to happen. We created a channel called politicalrevolution.tv. It's a YouTube channel that we'll make accessible soon. And I'm going to move all the newsrooms there. We're going to move other programs there like Disability TV. Uh, uh, I can't even think what else. We're going to leave We the People and Bernie rallies on Bernie 2016 TV because that's what it's for. All right? And... Uh, that way we can kind of separate out my crazy radical uh, fighting nature here and other th other programs. Uh, we can put them on politicalrevolution.tv. That allows uh, uh, for us to monetize. It allows for us to work with uh, other corporations in a different way, like LiveView. There are a lot of corporations that want to work with us. They support the idea of freedom of speech, and they can work better with us then. So uh, we're going to do that kind of shift things we'll cross promote between the two but that's what i'll be working on so that uh, so that we can keep bernie 2016 tv a little more clean now interestingly enough scott um scott galinda says won't make a difference because the association's already there right and uh, that we don't want to promote violence he's right i don't want to promote violence folks i want to promote civil disobedience okay and and just just for the record just for the record, I want to scroll down and show you what, what the, the definition of that is, and then we're going to look at some other news. But I, I, I'm right here, and so we're just going to do it anyway, damn it. Um, give me one second. And I would say that the art, the, maybe you could argue is artificial law that we're putting up between the two, um, even though we're now associated with it. And so in, in that respect, I do agree with Scott. I also think it's important to at least have the wall, because... 
if we at least start separating now, we're getting new fans every day. And so I still think it makes a difference to people coming in to the future. You know, let's say in six months we're still doing this, we're getting even better production wise. People will start to forgive and forget either or. Um, <laughs> well, you'll either, you, I really do. I mean, you'll, you'll realize because everyone at least in some respect thinks, okay, yeah, this guy's passionate. Maybe I don't agree about how he's going about it. Well, that doesn't really stop me from watching the show on the channel that I love how they go about it, right? Knowing that they've just got different channels. To me, that's what I look for. I'm not looking for one channel with eight guys with five different shows. And if I listen to one, I know what they're all saying. I want arguments. I want disagreements. I want different perspectives. And so I'm, I think it's great. Oh, well, thanks. And I know, and you're helping me expand it. But, but guys, the, 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 the problem is, is that what this was supposed to be is very difficult to make happen right now. Yeah, right. So creating an actual nonprofit, finding people that can even be involved, reaching out for grants. It's like, it's like another one of the places that I'm very incongruent, that I'm very torn on, that I'm kind of marinating on is like, how much of that do I need to do right now? And how much of that is important for Bernie? Okay. Because I don't want to take away resources that be going for Bernie. So I'm trying to run this thing as lean, as thin, as without resources as possible. So that we're not relying on people. So that, you know, like the whole idea of the newsroom, and I told Sean this, I told everybody this, it's like I'm not creating a newsroom so like John can have his own show and he can fucking yell and say whatever he wants. I'm creating the newsroom the way I'm doing it so that volunteers at Bernie 2016 TV do not feel obligated at all to be a part of the newsroom. The whole goal was to say, I know that I'm here every fucking day. I got nowhere else to be. Right? So I know that I can do a new show. And I may have locked myself into something a little too big for my britches, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I've got help. This is why Sean's here. This is why other people are here. They come in They when they can. not That was the whole idea of this setup. But let's just talk about civil disobedience really quick. <laughs> I just want to be clear. Uh, I'm just going to read this uh, part from uh, the, the word civil. This is from Wikipedia, and they're talking about uh, basically 1848. Henry David Thoreau gave lectures at the Concord Lyceum entitled The Rights and Duties of Individual in Relation to Government. We're talking about civil disobedience. But we're going to skip down to third paragraph. The word civil has several definitions. The one that is intended in this case, and the one that I intend, everybody, is relating to citizens and their interrelations with one another or with the state. And so civil disobedience means disobedience to the state. Sometimes people assume that civil in this case means observing accepted social forms, polite, which would make civil disobedience something like polite, orderly disobedience. No. Although that is an acceptable de dictionary definition of the word civil, it is not what is intended here. It is not what I intend at all. When I use the word civil disobedience, I mean it to the full extent of disobedience with the state. Okay? That's what I mean. That is what I advocate. Disobedience with the state. Disrupt the state. That's what I advocate. I just wanted to make that. Gandhi practiced civil disobedience, but Gandhi practiced a very different version of it. And actually, I looked that up, and they reference it in here. Uh, and he called it, I'm going to destroy this name, Satagraha. Sata, Sata Graha. Okay. This is what Gandhi called his version of civil disobedience. He said it was uh, loosely translated, it's Sanskrit, comes from Sanskrit, loosely translated as insistence on truth. Okay. Uh, sa satya. Truth, agraha, insistence, or holding firmly to, or holding on to truth, or truth force, is a particular form of nonviolent resistance or civil resistance. That is what Gandhi practiced, to be, to be absolutely clear. I just wanted to, to talk about that. Uh, so, yeah, disrupt. Current state of play, disrupt. Okay. Um, again, my question to you guys is, my question to you guys is, what do we do? Like, what do we do about the censorship? What do we do about the digital censorship? That's really where, we, we, you know, 
I was sitting there saying, we own the web. We own the net. What we put out there is what stays. That's how we control the media is the net. Not anymore. Not anymore when the CEO can go, take that down. We've got a thing coming up for Hillary on Sunday. Don't want anybody seeing that shit. I think one way to do it is, you know, not everyone's a Bernie supporter, unfortunately. Everyone, is, you know, everyone that uses Twitter has a, a potential to be affected by this. If you're for Trump, who knows? They could stop a Trump hashtag, you know, or they could stop, you know, the Hillary hashtag. If you're a Hillary supporter and you maybe you think, oh, that's great that they, they, they quashed that anti-Hillary thing. But what about next year when you want the, you know, when you're on the side of the, the person they're against, you know, you don't get to help them decide. They get this decide, and they're not for your best interests, even if your interests line up with theirs this election season. So I think it's important to let people know that, hey, you know, you don't have to necessarily be agreeing with or disagreeing with what they're doing right now, but disagree with the principle of it, which is that they're, they're saying one thing and then doing another. They act like they're, the, hey, take a look, come on Twitter, see what, you know, what the world's talking about. But then behind the scenes, they're manipulating it so that you think the world's talking about stuff they're not really talking about or that they're not talking about things that they really are. So to me, I think that's where it begins is to let people realize that it's not just this niche of people listening to this and talking here. It's anyone using Twitter. It's for their best interests to push Twitter. Twitter exists because we use it. So we can right. as easily make it a fucking MySpace if we really wanted to, you know. Well, but but so, so that's so, that's a great point to make. But here's the thing: so mm -hmm. somebody asked, "What do somebody?" There's a lot of comments going on. First of all, Kristen Cosgrove, I have that video, and we're going to play it. Yes, that is civil disobedience. Uh, this this is what we're talking about, folks. Okay, first they did it with which Hillary? They literally shut down which Hillary? Then they did it with this blocking the tracking of hashtag Bernie Sanders. When somebody says, what do you, somebody, I, I was trying to read comments, they were flying too fast. Somebody said, uh, uh, what do you mean we do own the net? No, 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 folks. When you sign into Twitter, the free service Twitter, free, you are agreeing that your intellectual property is theirs and they can do what the fuck they want. So the hashtag, they can do what the fuck they want. Yeah, well, we want to pull that down. We don't really have to keep it in there. If we wanted to be an integrity, if we wanted to be a company of integrity and ethics and moral, we would leave it there. But because we have direct interest in how the government runs and we are paying to have Hillary elected, we are certainly going to do what we want with our own machine that we own and control. That is how Twitter functions. Exactly. That is how Google functions. How Facebook functions. That is how Facebook functions. Although Facebook, Facebook doesn't say anything. Facebook doesn't lie. Facebook says, look. That's true. They're more out the open about it. That's true. Right. Facebook says, if you want your shit to be seen, you will be paying us money. Otherwise, your shit is not seen. And if you put pictures on our site, we can use them however the hell we want. Right. But everybody says that. Your yeah. agreement with Google, folks, Google is free. Except they data mine everything about you. All of your ad, everywhere you go, everywhere you look, the ad data about you is massive. There was an article that I didn't share a while back about a company that had actually done uh, tracking using ad data. They were able to figure out who caucused in a particular place by their cell phone data. They were able to figure out where these people were. They didn't have their names. They had their ad patterns, their shopping patterns from their cell phone data. And they were able to figure out who these people were. That's Google. That's AdWords. That's ad tracking. Okay. That's happening all the time, folks. I saw another site the other day. You can do it with cats. Cats in the neighborhood. Cat locators, just based off the RFID chips and cats. Figure out who the hell you are, where you are, where your cat is. Basically, people post pictures on their cats. Oh, that's his cat. Now I know where you live. This, These are just simple examples, okay, of control and power. But right here, this is an example. This is no different than burning the book, hashtag Bernie Sanders. There was a book called Hashtag Bernie Sanders. It has been burned. There was a book called Witch Hillary. It's been burned. Our government is burning books, your books, your content, when it feels like it. 
That's oppression. That's censorship. That's Nazi-like censorship. What we've got going on. All right. So that's what I say. How do we combat that? What do we do to combat that? I want a way. Somebody else was saying in here that we have to create our own uh, net. I agree. I agree. I don't know how we do that. I, I will say this. What I do is I can I can connect the big pieces together. I can say I see how that big piece connects with that big piece. That's how I made this system. Right. What I can't do is the detail work, the coding, right? I'm not some master coder, I'm not a hacker, right? But I could see, if we have, I, know, I know the systems exist. I know how we can put them together. I need people to do the work. That's how this happened, okay? So uh, that's what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, let's, let's, what do we do, folks? We need to do something because we're, we're, we're being, we're, uh, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> we are being censored. But I want to play the, where did I, you know, I had it, now it's gone. Where the hell did it go? Here it is. Kristen Cosgrove, you mentioned the San Jose uh, resistance. Here it is right here. We're playing this from Labor Video. I don't know if it's going to shut us down. Let's hope it doesn't. Uh, Labor Video, thank you very much. Uh, Bernie 2016 TV will be subscribing to you. And this is, uh, here we go. This is uh, Sanders supporters, including trade unionists, protest and speak out at 2016 CA uh, Democratic Convention. <laughs> Uh, my name is Melody. I'm a teacher in Richmond, California. And I'm a member of the union, and my union did not support him, didn't take a vote on any of the members, but many of us are for Bernie. I believe everything he believes. I believe he's honest. He doesn't take money from anybody crooked. He wants to give everybody health care. He wants to give everybody education. He wants to give everybody equal rights. I think he's a great candidate, and I think he's going to win. And what about the issue of charter schools and privatization? Are you concerned about that? I'm extremely concerned. I teach in an inner city school, and my area, Richmond, California, has been targeted by charter schools. And we lose, I'd say we've lost about a quarter or more of our whole student population in the last few years. And the top kids go there. So we teach them how to read, we work really hard, and then they leave our schools and go to the charter schools, and then we get, you know, different kids and take it's called cherry picking, creaming. Exactly, yes. Sanders. Because enough with the establishment. 
politics. Nothing gets done. Frustration up to here. What's going on in Stockton as far as working? Low wages, inequality, you name it, it's there. No access to education, health care. Everything that people need is not there. Not there, non-existent. All these people come here, they lock themselves up in their chambers. They don't care what's going on. They're still getting paid. What kind of work do you do? I'm an educator. What's your name? Fred. What, are you in a union? Uh, no, I'm actually in management, but I'm very pro-union. My father was able to sustain our family, was able to feed us because he was a teamster. I'm tired of the unions eroding in this country, the middle class going away, and the poor class being treated like served slaves. No more. No more. We've had enough. What's your name? Gloria. Why are you here today? Because I want to change. Uh, I'm here to support a political platform. This is not about Hillary. It's not about Bernie. It's about the working families of this country, and we have had enough. I like that. That's civil disobedience, folks. That's uh, that's the beginning of civil disobedience. Actually, it's what that is. That's the beginning of it. Um. Yeah, yeah. Executive decision. The State Department is being invested by the FBI now. Hillary Clinton is being invested by the FBI. Uh, I. We we can talk about that. Uh, but that was cool. Okay. Do you see what happened there? They're blocking the process. Now, that's that's right there. This this right here is is this close. Think about. I'm gonna just Kent State. Everybody remember Kent State. This right here is this close to something like that happen. When the government sees too much of this and gets tired of it, when the establishment wants to push back against our marches and they send the National Guard out, that is when you will be faced with a very tough choice. So I just want to, maybe my job here is to prepare everybody for what's coming. That we all hope it goes unicorn rainbow Bernie style and we march in with love and peace. Based on the way the establishment has acted in the last 40 years, I'm not going to bet on it. I'm going to prepare myself for far worse. And maybe that's what I'm really trying to say, folks. I think one of the interesting things to think about is, like, how long do you wait for people to, you know, wake <laughs> up, basically, right? We're not seeing higher turnouts than, than usual, you know, or as high as we'd like or hoped uh, so far. But, you know, there's always tomorrow, you know, it, it only increases. Uh, yeah, the people are feeling more and more inspired to get involved uh, every day. It seems so, but it seems like you know, how long do we wait for like you know that ultimate goal of a hundred percent voter turnout uh, before we you know the, the group of people that are you know ready to take a, another step forward and trying to get our democracy back? When do you? separate that do you do you wait another 10 years has it already been long enough that, that's a, that's, a, that's something i think that's interesting to to contemplate yeah absolutely absolutely let's 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 i'm reading some of the comments more than 150 people joining us uh today uh that protest was in san jose folks uh, let's talk about some other news real quick because uh, I did load up a lot of news, and I don't want this to be just another rant session. Here we go. The FBI's investigation of uh, Clinton's emails makes Bernie Sanders the true Democratic frontrunner. Yes, it does. Yes, it most certainly does. Uh, this is our good friend H.A. Goodman uh, just pushed this article out this morning. Grab it in the list. Share it with everybody. Make sure they see it. I'm just going to read one little part. We're going to scroll down. You know how I like to find the one little part. This is what's beautiful right here. Uh, Something tells me that the words commander-in-chief and ongoing FBI investigation shouldn't be uttered in the same sentence. If you find it odd that America's top diplomat would need to circumvent government networks, then your viewpoint likely coincides with the 100 FBI agents currently working on the case. I just, I just want to make the point that those of you who say Hillary Clinton is got the best presidential qualities to lead, then those presidential qualities must include being investigated by the FBI 
for not having the right security clearance in the first place, for putting the server in a dude's house, in a basement, or in the kitchen, or in the bathroom, wherever the hell it was. I, I, I don't even know why she isn't disqualified for that, folks. Oh, well, all the State Department officials do. We all build a private server, and we all hand it off to somebody else and stick it in a basement. So if that was Sanders, he would have been disqualified. Exactly. Since oh. they're buddy buddy, you know, look the other way. Oh, yeah. absolutely, of course. Uh, where is where is there another thing here? Now, now I want to I want I want to go back to uh, justice for Flint really quick, folks, and I want to talk about two sides of the coin here uh, because this really was. I just want to remind everybody, justice for Flint. I don't know that Revolt TV. Here's the thing: that live video footage was unlisted. They blasted it out on Twitter yesterday and said it's a 24-hour loop, but it's unlisted, so I don't really know if they want it shared. I put the link in there just because I want everybody to know about it, but we should get in touch with Revolt TV on Twitter and just say, hey, guys, what do you, how can we help you? Uh, I, I can't remember the guy's name who was in charge of this thing. Uh, I had his name. like Ryan something or another. Whoever you are, man, awesome. Thank you for putting it together. For all the actors and actresses that took time and the, and the creatives and the musicians and everybody that went down there that did that, kudos to you. Thank you for thinking about something that actually matters. The Oscars don't fucking matter. Sorry, don't give a shit about the Oscars this year. We actually do have bigger things to think about. And hey, Chris Rock, I just want to I just want to go to this thing. It's a couple things here. Sean King and, and, and you know, we've talked about Sean King before. Sean King had this to say. I guess they watched just Chris Rock's intro. And somewhere in here, here I guess the, the bottom point in this, and, and not because I'm not African American, I really don't have a say in this whatsoever, but I'm just going to read you one of the lines. Knowing what's going on in the country today, folks, uh, he took, this is what uh, they say, uh, he took particular issue with Mr. Rock's joke that blacks didn't pr protest in 1962 or 1963 over the Oscars because they had real things to protest at the time. You know what? <laughs> what you should be protesting right now is that the freedom you thought you had was never really given to you. And if you vote for Hillary Clinton, you are actually voting to oppress yourselves. I, I, I don't know what to tell you this time. You're doing it to yourselves. Okay, um, but, but hey, so who's are you on? Great, great. And, and Chris Rock, are you really shilling for Hillary? It, it appears that the majority of the well-paid uh, uh, celebrities, and I just say majority because I know there's been certain individuals like this, uh, Sarah uh, Silverman, and uh, uh, I know there's been you know Killer Mike, the celebrity, but, but you know most of the big Hollywood names seem to have gone for uh, uh, Hillary, right? And I think it really comes down to how much money do you have, right? How much money do you have and how much money are you willing to lose? And what kind of integrity do you have as a person? So we already know where Morgan Freeman stands. Morgan, dude, you should be loaded. I don't know what it is with you trying to keep your paycheck. Man. But what it comes down to for me is in the end, I'm going to know everybody that voted for Hillary. I'm going to know who stood with the establishment because to me, this is an election. This is a, this is a political revolution. And so if you're a establishment stooge or an establishment collaborator, you will be remembered as such when this is over. That doesn't mean that you're not included in the universe. It, we want everybody to belong. This is a belonging revolution, too. It just means that I won't honor you by watching your films. I won't give a shit about you anymore. I will do what I can do as a consumer to make sure you don't get any of my money. That's all. That's what I can do in terms of power there, right? So is Chris Rock, Chris Rock is for Hillary out now? I don't know. I have no idea. I just no. think those statements. Okay. Well, here's, here's what I'm trying to say about that, man. Mm -hmm. Anybody that actually, I realized there were a few people that at the Oscars, like, had some nice things to say about Bernie Sanders. My understanding is there were some people that did some testimony for Bernie Sanders at the Oscars. Maybe you guys can tell me. I, I think the fact that they had the Oscars the way they did was kind of distasteful. I think uh, they had a couple a, presenters hint towards things by just saying, hey, let's go for po uh, politicians who are owned by corporations kind of things. Uh, okay. and no one okay. out said anything. But, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought maybe somebody like made a, an actual like Bernie no. pledge. And as far as that uh, HuffPo article goes, I think a lot of that was just that he was against some of the jokes Chris Rock was making. Um, well, it, it just, uh, it, they, yeah, they seem very... 
to me, for Chris Rock to make those statements seems like you're to making light of the current situation, in particular the BLM situation right now. So here's what I would say to that. I'd say he's a damn comedian and it's his job. I can't stand it when people hire a comedian to come and tell jokes and then say, oh, you can't tell that joke. And, oh, you're being insensitive. I think you, 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 maybe you don't think he's funny. Maybe you think he's wrong and you might actually think those things, but uh, you're, you're treading weird ground when you start you know, taking a comedian to task for what they do. I think it's a comedian's job to push those boundaries in society you know, and joke about weird things. Like, I like Anthony right. Cheslinek as a comedian, and he's joking about dead babies, and he's joking about drug abuse. Well, and, okay, and, okay, you know, I get it. I get it. Everything can be funny if it's the right joke and the right timing, and it's not insensitive to a, a, a timeliness factor. You know, I mean, there's lots of things that go into it, but I think he's kind of right in a way. It was like, we're, you know, they were being a lot, you know, uh, blacks were even more oppressed than they were now. And they I still disagree. are. I disagree. No. Okay. I disagree. You don't think it's worse then? I don't know. I'm not a black person, neither are you. So we really shouldn't even be having the conversation. Honest. Okay. Uh, hey, black people, do you feel more or less oppressed? Uh, here's, here's, listen, I guess, I guess this is what it's really, here's, it's a, I, I, I get it. It's, it's not a bad point. It's, it's not a bad point if it weren't for the fact that this is a political revolution. If this were just another election year, if things weren't so fucked up in this country, if the income inequality wasn't so ridiculous, you bet, Sean. He's a comedian. He's making comedian jokes. Let him let him make fun of anything. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. You're right. But at this point, it's, it's not right. So would it have been okay if you were telling jokes that were pro No, no what I guess what, what I'm saying, what I, I, let me, let me right. explain. We, we are, it, where does Chris Rock stand? Does Chris Rock stand with the establishment? It does. It does, it it does matter. matter. It does matter. Okay. Let me tell you why it matters. Here's why it matters. Okay. It matters okay. because of this, folks. We are in a political revolution. Okay. The rules have changed. What does Gil Scott Heron say? He's a comedian at the Oscars. What does so, Gil so. Scott Heron say? What are the words to kill Scott Heron? The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not go better with Coke. The revolution will not be brought to you by Scope or Dr. Pepper. The revolution, the revolution is not a fucking entertainment show. This is real, Sean. Well, so your disagreement well, so is with him not coming out. It's I'm not with the jokes necessarily. It's for him not yes. standing up. Yes. And away from the yes. establishment. But well, he became the establishment by agreeing to be a comic on the Oscars in the first place. Sure, sure. So maybe what I'm saying is why are you even on the Oscars? Why are you even on the fucking Oscars? Where do you stand? Any black person, any black person today, in my personal opinion, I'm not black, but any black person today, one that would vote for Hillary, two that would work for the establishment, knowing exactly what's going on right now, is either ignorant or naive or really likes their fat paycheck. I, I, well, I, that's 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 my that's my statement. Okay. It's probably the latter more than the former, but we don't know. Like you said, who knows? But uh, I don't know. I think once you're there doing uh, 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 doing jokes for a crowd like the Oscar crowd, and not the crowd that's watching it, but the ones that are there, um, you've already become an establishment player in a certain way. And if he goes out there as a black comic, who I you know I pay a lot of attention to. Com uh, comedy, so I know he's known for doing edgy jokes that are racially, you know, uh, tinged. Uh, if he goes out and does a whole bunch of friendly ass jokes that are pro establishment, I don't see how that's better than him and pushing the envelope. Now, he didn't push the envelope in a way that you liked or that was anti establishment enough for us to, to be for. You know, I think they were, and the jokes were okay, but uh, I think that. I don't know. I guess we're just running circles around the arguments So, you know, yeah, he needs, if he's going to be established, anti-establishment, he wouldn't be there in the first place. And I guess I'm looking at it, like, optimistically thinking, oh, well, at least he was pushing the envelope where he could have just been safe and told okay. a bunch of friendly jokes, you know. Maybe. First, he's, 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 he's shilling for this. First, is, is, for, for me, this is what, what, I, what we're drawing a line here. Right? <clears throat> Bernie Sanders is redefining the people's movement. There's a new party being formed, right? 
And basically what we're saying is you're either with the old party or you're with the new party and you're with the old party. Fuck you. That's what I say. Okay? I, that's what we're going to look at. Alright, I'd love you to be a part of the new party, but if you're actually voting for the old party, you're voting some seriously against the interests of the human beings on this planet. And that pisses me off. That offends me greatly. Okay. And the future of our country's ability to do anything about it. The more power, the longer they stay in power, the, the, the right. more they'll take away our rights, you know. So. Right. And, and I'm watching the conversation. This is what they're going on back and forth. Uh, people are talking about a whole bunch of different things because we're kind of going off on this topic. But I want to, I want to, I want to contrast. I want to contrast Chris Rock. Okay. And Chris Rock and his opportunity on that stage in front of prime time. When I talk about hijacking prime time, that's a great way. Okay. He could have hijacked that moment. And he could have blasted a message about Bernie Sanders, probably would have cut off the feed, they would have hauled him off, canceled the Oscars, but what a message. That's civil disobedience. Instead of taking a paycheck and shilling. Okay. And what I want to contrast, hey, Chris Rock, what what uh, the, the guy last night whose name I'm not gonna remember, the uh, Ryan, I wanna say it's Ryan Kubler, who did the uh 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 Flint for Justice. Okay. That's civil disobedience. That was Oscar worthy. Okay. Hand your fucking Oscar to that guy. Okay. And I just want to contrast your statement about a comedian and mention Jesse Owens, who did this after winning the fucking Olympics okay, over in fucking Nazi Germany as a black dude in the 30s. That is making a statement. That is civil fucking disobedience. That is using your moment of prime time to make a statement. And that is what any celebrity that has an opportunity to be in the spotlight, who actually has balls and integrity and courage and believes in this country and Bernie Sanders, that is what you should use your status for. Well, you certainly could have. What? They certainly could have. I believe he's done it before and he probably wants to do it again. So, you know, yeah. So we agree at least that he's an establishment show. <laughs> I, I think so. I think so. Yeah. But it's, it seems pretty apparent. I mean, if you're doing the you know, Oscars, and like you said, you're not taking that moment. He could have said something. He might have gotten in trouble. They probably would have let him back on. If they didn't, who cares? He could have came out and said, yeah, look, I said what, you know, everyone, you know, what I wanted to say. And look, they're, they're you know, not going to have me back on because, you know, they're trying to, you know, change the, the conversation. So he could have, okay. but, you know. So, all right, all right we're, we're, we'll move on. We'll move on, folks. I'm li looking at everybody in the chat. That's it. I just wanted to say that it, it, there's a dividing line here. You got an, It's people versus establishment. I saw somebody come through. It may have been a troll. Somebody said, why am I so butthurt over jokes? I'm not butthurt over jokes. I explained very exactly what I was talking about there. If you are for Bernie, if you really are about changing this country, if you really are about changing the system, and you recognize just how bad it is, use your status. Use what you have. Okay. Don't hide behind it. Don't keep making a paycheck. Um, let's move on to some other news. Because Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders isn't worried. You guys gotta, I, I gotta tell you, so, so talking about tomorrow, Super Tuesday, I will do a stream of thought. Janine has been telling me some information in Slack saying that stuff going on around her, so she's in Rhode Island, Right, she's near New Hampshire and Massachusetts, all those. She says it is absolutely insane. There are things happening on the ground there she cannot believe for Bernie Sanders. I think we're going to see a ridiculous turnout tomorrow. I know we are going to see a ridiculous turnout tomorrow. I think the pundits are going to be shocked. I know establishment media is going to probably try to block this out because of the turnout tomorrow. 10,000 people showed up in Texas yesterday, folks. 10,000 people at one rally. This is, this is, this is why I get so angry at the, at how we need to fight the digital war. Because we know the force of the people. Do you, do you think if, if, if we could get established media to broadcast these rallies, I mean, how fast could we convert the rest of America if Bernie were being given equal airtime? We would have had we would have had America swept and done by Christmas if he'd been given equal airtime. Right? That that's that's what I'm trying to do, folks. I saw a lot of comments. I saw a lot of people make comments about um, 
and, and I am trying to read your comments here, and I, and I saw a lot of people uh, make comments about uh, uh, phone banking. But what else? What else did I see? Shit! Ah! It was about tomorrow. It was about mm. tomorrow. Uh, I'll get back to it. Uh, it's it's important. It's important. Um, I know. Okay, listen. I know I said the same about South Carolina. South Carolina was a massive failure for one major reason. Twelve percent. Twelve percent of the Democratic voters decided to show up to vote. Bernie said at the very beginning, "If you don't show up to vote, we're done. We lose." And if we can't get people to show up to vote, and in South Carolina, 12% of the voting Democratic populace decided to show up to vote. We're not going to win with 12%. Not going to win. Okay. Uh, but if you look at the other states, even the pundits already show Bernie Sanders strong in five of the 11 states. So it looks pretty good for him to carry five of the 11. I want him to carry six of the 11, seven of the 11. Okay. But Bernie's looking strong as shit in five of the 11 Super Tuesday states. Now, they're starting to lay bullshit down about Massachusetts. But Bernie had a six-point lead in Massachusetts, and then another poll came out and said he didn't. Whatever. Massachusetts uh, 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 and New Hampshire. Janine said a note yesterday. She said there is there's no way, in her opinion, that Bernie will lose Massachusetts. No effing way. Actually, I should probably check live production just to make sure she hasn't said anything um, <laughs> to contradict that. But, yeah, 7-Eleven for Bernie. I think it could happen. I really do. So, listen, that, that's we will be doing a streamathon, but apparently the last – Sean, do you know the details about the results? My understanding is the results coming in very late. Like, Colorado doesn't even have shit. My, dad, my dad's going to caucus in Colorado, and he says uh, uh, not to, like, 7 o'clock at night or 9 o'clock at night or something. I'm not aware of specific times, but I do know that they vary, so it's not like they're all coming in at once, but yeah, I'm not sure beyond that, but it's something we can easily check, and we'll have it all ready and have updates for you during our streamathon that I'm assuming we'll have. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do a streamathon tomorrow. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at a message here from, what is it, you got to be kidding me, what does it say, Kristen? CNN and MSNBC have announced that Hill as the nominee, and then more people think she's more electable? What? They're already making that announcement? They're already just early? Because they're showing that ridiculous uh, delegate count? Right? Look at yeah. pledged delegates. How many pledged delegates? Can somebody find me a meme that shows pledged delegates, that shows reality, please? And then let's get the total number of delegates, what's like 200 plus, that are up for grabs on Super Tuesday, and let's break it down what the five states that Bernie is going to win, how many delegates those are. Right? Because people don't, that, that, this is a long game, folks. People don't understand this. It's, 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 uh, 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 this, again, we are fighting mainstream media, establishment media bullshit. We are fighting the bullshit. We are absolutely fighting the bullshit. It's ridiculous. So yeah, yeah, um, what's up? I'm looking at the times for tomorrow, and okay. yeah, that's certainly true. Most of them are early to late all day, and then but Colorado's appears to start at 7 p.m., which is the only one that starts that late from what I've seen. <laughs> they just decided, oh, Vermont too. Vermont also decided to just have it late. But most of them, like Virginia, 6, to, 6 a.m. to 7 uh, Georgia, 7 a.m. to 7, and then just two states have later. So they will, Vermont and uh, Denver. Or, uh, uh, okay, all right. right. So, so my understanding, so people are asking about, thank you for that. Sounds like we got a yeah. long tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> people are asking about what we're doing. Streams today. I know there's one somewhere. I don't know if I have a local feed port or if I have any kind of feed port, so I will let you guys know. All right, I need to check in with uh, the team. Tomorrow, Bernie Sanders is going to be in Vermont. They did an announcement. Um, I don't know where he is today, but they did put a shot of things saying that he was. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, they did. So he's going to be in Vermont tomorrow for a Super Tuesday watch party. I don't know what kind of stream we're going to have. What's going to go on? I really don't know. Uh, hopefully, we'll get something right. 
and and uh, we'll, whatever it is, we'll broadcast it. Whatever we can find, we'll broadcast. I'll figure out something for a, a streamathon. I just got to figure out how we're going to go on for that long because that cuts really into late night. And uh, maybe have to quit, go eat dinner, come back or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the, the the problem really is having somebody to fill the space just for a bit. Uh, or having some long videos to run. So maybe we can post some long video and run some stuff uh, together and just hang out and chat and talk about that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more than willing to do that. Let's just cover a couple more articles really quick because we're coming up on the end of the show. This is uh, U.S. Uncut. I think I referenced it yesterday. It's in the drop-down, folks, but you should really grab it because it covers uh, a lot of the information about how uh, Bill and Hillary uh, basically ran, built their legacy on white supremacy. Right? Bill had no problem with the Confederate flag hanging out. Matter of fact, he signed a, a bill uh, to that effect. Um, uh, he he uh, condemned this guy to death. This, that was really interesting. Uh, this was my favorite fun fact from Bill. Okay, um, Federal funding for uh, public housing fell 17 billion, a 61% re reduction under Bill Clinton's tenure. Federal funding for corrections rose 19 billion. Hey, that's a flop of some money. When Bernie talks about the uh, the uh, exchange of money going into the wrong place, right there, we just took $17 billion out of housing and put $19 billion into prisons. Right? Isn't that nice? Yeah. Isn't that nice? What else? Oh, this was great. So this, this you know, I can't see the whole thing. This one was a great story. So, uh, Bill signed this thing back in the 90s, 96, called the PRWORA, and it was some healthcare thing. And they had some black woman on there who was the token black woman with this healthcare. Yeah, well, she, she, she ended up in debt, couldn't pay it off, didn't work. She got rejected for the very bill that Bill signed because it was a piece of bullshit legislation. There's a lot of good stuff in there. You guys should read it. You should send it to people who are a Hillary fan. You should send it to them. Get them to, to, to get them to read the truth. Uh, African Americans, in particular. Uh, here's another one I wanted to cover. This is also on the list. So back, uh, th this is Hillary Clinton who took money from the uh, uh, Arab and Muslim American Association. All right. Down here we talk about blood money. So she took fifty thousand dollars in political contributions from the American Muslim Alliance, and somebody blasted her for it. But now that we're all trying to be friendly. She's okay again with it. So back, back then, she took money from the Muslims, and she was like, oh, I'm, get rid of that. Ah, we're going into Iraq in 2001, and we can't have money from that. God, you can't have that money here. But today, oh, come here. I love you. Give me your money. Right? Make up your mind. Have some integrity. Okay, something cool that has disappeared that I wanted to show you was that Eddie, one of our volunteers, has created a very cool system. Uh, that is going to give us updates for Super Tuesday. He's going to give us updates from Reddit. He's going to plug them in. We're going to have better updates that you can get from than you're going to get from the establishment. We don't have CNN's fancy, stupid news board. We got Eddie and his spreadsheets. So we're going to look at those tomorrow. It's going to be cool. Wait, more about Hillary. We're getting into the Hillary bashing. I know I'm going through these really fast. But let's just look at this. Demand that Hillary dump Monsanto's lobbyists. Here's another one. So in 2014, Hillary Clinton received $335,000 speaking fee for giving a keynote address to one of Monsanto's main GMO lobbying front groups. While on the campaign in 2007, Hillary Clinton held a fundraiser at Monsanto's law firm in Washington, D.C. Now, you know what this was about, folks? This was all about the growing worry that farmers didn't want to use GMO shit anymore. And so she was all out there to Make sure they understood that it was okay, and that we're gonna we're gonna push GMO, and we're gonna make sure they buy your shit. I'm sure, she's changed her mind on that. And then to go along with that, here's what happens when people don't want GMO anymore. U.S. Mole's option is sugar refiners face supply crunch because they don't want to use GMO. They don't want Monsanto sugar. This is what happens when you flip flop. I just had to cover those. I had to cover those. We're at ten twenty. We're almost out of here. As far as things today, eh? 
There's got to be a stream somewhere. We'll bring it to you. If not, just me tomorrow, 9 o'clock, the newsroom. Super Tuesday. We're going to do a streamathon. We're going to have fun. And, uh, I don't know, but we'll discuss more about what we should do in terms of civil disobedience. I saw some people talking about reaching out to Anonymous in various uh, ways. Please do. Please reach out to Anonymous. Please reach out to Occupy, anybody that would be interested in working with me. I guess what I offer is I, I've got a pretty good idea for how to put these things together. I've already got a broadcast system here. I'm willing to take the fall because I really don't have anything. I, 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 the wife is separate and safe. All right. We're not legally married. Our finances are separate. I've got like I no credit. I've got nothing. So uh, I'm, I'm OK. I'm OK with doing my part of civil disobedience and taking the blame for hacking a network primetime stream. All right. So let's let's figure out how we can beat them at the digital game. If they're going to censor our voice, let's amplify what we can. Let's place our voice in their network, okay? I want to do some real co co covert work. I think it's necessary. I, that's the kind of activist I am. Okay? I absolutely agree with everything else that needs to be done for the revolution, everything that Bernie Sanders wants to do. Somebody asked earlier, John, am I associated with the official Bernie campaign? Hell no. They wouldn't touch us. They wouldn't come near us, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that way back when I started this, I was very naive in thinking that maybe they'd just come on by and say, oh, yeah, thank you for creating this volunteer network. We'd love to work with you. Matter of fact, we'll support it. <laughs> no. <laughs> this, no matter what we would have done with this network, no matter how clean I would have kept it, how pretty I would have kept it, um, the word we received very indirectly, was that the campaign has to work with everybody as grassroots elements. They've hired specific contractors, of course, and those contractors are made public, but they had to vet those contractors very carefully. Right? Because anything that can be used against the campaign will be used against the campaign by establishment media. So any connection to this entity, no matter what people think of it, right? You can think of this as the best thing ever created. You can think of this as an offensive entity that needs to go away fast. Either way, it's a liability to the Sanders campaign. So there is no connection whatsoever. Does, does that mean... To, but but in, in that same vein, once Bernie is elected, do I want to work for Bernie Sanders? Hell yeah. Do I want to create the Global Engagement Network? Do I want to uh, bring forth engagement broadcasting and remove old establishment one-way broadcasting from, from the, the world? Yeah, absolutely. Do I want to compete directly with bullshit news and bring real news? Yes. But the purpose here is to get Bernie Sanders elected. And that's, that's why we exist. And, and remember, folks, I created this a long back because Bernie was getting no coverage whatsoever. Still doesn't really get any coverage. And, uh, We've, been, we've learned quickly just how censored we are. Uh, people talking about YouTube. We don't own YouTube, and YouTube can do whatever they want. YouTube can shut down our content whenever they want, whenever they please, without explanation, really. That's in the terms of so. So, uh, anyway, talk about a lot of stuff. Sean, you want to comment on that? Uh, well, I was going to say one important but very, very sad thing to report on was the passing of Bernie Baby. Um, Is that, so, was that confirmed? Because there was people well, saying that there was okay. That was I, well, I have no. Well, no, I have no idea. So maybe okay. it, uh, hopefully, if uh, that's some sort of joke. Uh, well, I don't know how funny that. There is. was it's, it, there was mention. I don't know that it's a joke, but there was mention of the fact that it might be some kind of a money scam because there was a uh, GoFundMe campaign and people weren't sure. I don't know if it's true. It's horrifically sad. Yes. Yes, well, and our just, thoughts go out. Yeah, of course. So hopefully Just be not. weary, folks. There's a lot of these scams. I'll go out and say, hopefully it's a scam. And yeah. No, no. But sudden infant death syndrome is a leading cause of uh, young children, so it is a very real and serious problem. So, it is. Yeah, it is. Say that. Oh, no, here's the new. Okay, and Nico just dropped a thing in, so she's saying it's legit. Um, yeah, 
they were just coming out in Slack to mention the story, and I hadn't heard of it. Heard it, so uh, right. I'm being told mm-hmm. Bernie's on right now. Uh, oh. If anybody wants to find me a local stream, I'm happy to go live. Or Robin Morris, is that what you got here? No. <laughs> and oftentimes. Oh, I see. He's got it in here. So yeah, Bernie is live now, folks. But I don't have a local stream. I don't. I don't have something I can use. That's uh, that's part of the problem. One. Just just on that note, guys. There's actually ways that I could grab it. But what, part of the problem has been I want to keep it on YouTube for the convenience of it being there for people to find it. But that's where we get shut down all the time. Uh, been working with some people on on just embedding it and delivering it to our own website. But I need the chat functionality to exist. And if the chat functionality is going to exist, then people need to be able to access the chat quickly and easily. And so that's all part of the problem. So we're working on that stuff. Um, I did. Uh, there's a lot of other people talking about things we could do. But, you know, email me at info at bernie2016.tv. Let's talk about it. I got a bunch of emails that came in from a bunch of people the last few days. I'm going to get back to those today. I promise. I really do. Um, I will see you later today if we do have a stream, other than the one that's going on right now with Bernie. And uh, what we got, Sam? Um, I, I, I got it. What is this with the John? Ol- I have to see this drum. Not Trump. John Oliver must have done some funny bit last night that I didn't see, and everybody's wow. talking about it. Anyway, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, well, thanks for having me, and uh, don't forget that anyone out there that's looking for our podcast, uh, you know, any, we're doing really uh, more popular episodes and events will be on our SoundCloud page now at soundcloud.com slash 2016 tv so you can go there and download stuff and give a listen there and comment and let us know how we're doing and what else you would like to see. All right, there you go. All right, so yeah, and guys, it looks like there's a link that's been dropped. Sean, I make sure you grab that. It's a link in. Uh, you you were talking. I'm sorry, I was looking at this like the SoundCloud thing. We got to get that moving big time. You were talking yeah. about that. Yeah. We're gonna get going on that. We're gonna get stuff going on that. Sean's running that. Sorry, I'm totally just like totally. Yeah, people dropped a link for Bernie Live. Right. So there's a link for Bernie Live on a YouTube channel, guys, and uh, they've got chat going. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, bother to grab it and repush. So just go ahead and hang out there with uh, the Sanders ticket. Uh, he's uh, running that ABC News, and he's got it set up in a way so that he's not, hopefully he won't get uh, nailed. I will tell you this, the reason that I don't try that kind of shit, folks, the reason I don't do that and try to put it in a smaller frame and all that crap is because we generate so much activity, no matter what we do, that we get hit. The, the difference is in how much activity we generate. Right? How many people show up live? Uh, uh, there's, a, there's signals, there's things that get flagged in that, and that's why we get nailed. Okay, so I, I can't risk it, but Go hang out with this guy and, and watch this. It's great. Thanks for uh, bringing this to Sanders Ticket. And, uh, uh, I'm just reading some comments, folks. I, I don't know how close you guys are asking about uh, uh, Massachusetts. We'll find out. We'll find out. Oh, nice. All right, so I'm looking at some other stream links. You guys are talking to me right now. I'll see if I can run it. I'll run it. Otherwise, do what the Sanders camp says to do. Go to BernieSanders.com. Log in there. Everything you need is there at BernieSanders.com. There's connect.BernieSanders.com. It's BernieSanders.com forward slash donate. Okay? Forward slash phone bank. There's, uh, there's all of these things to do. The boots on the ground effort or phone effort is super important. Right? So keep that going, folks. Uh, if you're interested in working with me on more digital disruption, hit me at info at bernie2016.tv. Uh, my goal is to hijack prime time so we can deliver a big message to people uh, and, and do some real civil disobedience in the digital age. That's what I want to do. Uh, so help me with that. Remember, folks, that... Uh, can't hear me? No? Why well, on, but you can hear me. Go on there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love reading the comments like, John, we can't hear you. What? When? Ah, let's have it. Uh, 
Yes, phone bank in Massachusetts today. Maybe maybe we don't have anything going. We'll do a phone bankathon or something. I don't know. I gotta find out what's going on, folks. I I uh, I I, uh, I have to leave the tube. I have to leave the TARDIS and go find out what's happening in the real world uh, in, in the house. Uh, right here is the political revolution. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway. I will do a live phone banking show if you think it'll motivate. I'm more than happy to do that if you think it would motivate people to do so. I would. Uh, Rand Love 420. Hey, I just harvested, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the reasons I got I gotta get to work on that. All right, guys, we're going out with end of the corporate age because it is the end of the corporate age. I want to thank you all for being here and for growing with me, for exploring what the hell we're doing here. I mean, this is a political revolution, but it's a new one. It's a political revolution of digital aid. That's never happened. And so we have different adversaries, different enemies, different tools and weapons to use. And we have to fight in a different way. And we're fighting not just for Bernie Sanders. We're fighting to save the planet. Everybody needs to remember that. When it comes down to an argument with some Hillary supporter about guns or about foreign policy, you want to say, hey, dying planet. You know? Just, just bring them back to the point, folks. Say, Hillary is under investigation by the FBI. Dying planet. What do you think is going to get done? Right? Everybody keeps talking about Warren. She wrote a, must be wrote a, a pro Bernie article, uh, which I heard people say. Uh, do it, John, please. Uh, show these people how easy it is. Okay, we'll do the, we'll do a uh, phone bank account. I, uh, we will do a phone bank account. I, I really usually need Denine for that. We'll see if she's around. Uh, but uh, we'll try to do it anyway. So thank you guys for being with me. We'll be here tomorrow. I am going to move everything over, but I can't move it over to politicalrevolution.tv until I have graphics and all that stuff, and that means a conversation with Steph. And thank you, Sean, for being here and, yep. uh, and always helping out and doing things. Sean does so many things, just like all the rest of the volunteers. Guys, that's one of the reasons why I'm so frustrated. i got to figure out a way to make this sustainable, not just for me, but for all of us, right? We can't just keep doing this here the way we are. we got to figure out a way to keep it going for the revolution and grow it for the people. And so I'm, I'm open to ideas. My, uh, my hoping that Elon Musk drops by with a big check hasn't happened yet, but it could. I'm not, I'm not going to discount the possibility. What? And Hanauer. Oh, and Hanauer. Yeah, so yeah. they need to split it. That's, yeah, sure. We'll take it. Yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> All right, guys, here you go. End of the corporate age. Thanks for being with us today. I'll probably see you guys later if I'm doing some kind of phone banking thing. And, uh, hey, we got through this whole thing without, uh, you know, without truly uh, saying anything violent. I didn't get too mad. That's wonderful. I've been working on that. I spent all day yesterday uh, at a different house in a different place just thinking about what's going on here. And uh, it, it, it uh, really helps me remember that we still have to bring it home. We still have to accomplish the goal. Doesn't take away the anger. Doesn't take away the passion. We just need to stay on point with the goal. Stay on point with the goal. And figure out the best way to do that together. So, uh, thank you for being with us. Feel the burn, everybody. End of the corporate. The wealthiest people.
cannot wreck our planet for their short-term profits. During the last 10 months, our campaign, with your help and the help of millions of Americans, has come a very, very long way. When we began, as you may recall, we were about 3% of the polls, 60, 70 points behind Secretary Clinton. We had no money. Uh, we had no political organization. Um, we were up against a candidate supported by virtually the entire political establishment. A candidate who was considered to be the inevitable nominee of the Democratic Party. Well, in 10 months, a few things have changed. Important, although unpleasant truths. 
Right now in America, we have a corrupt campaign finance system that is undermining American democracy. Now, I wish I could call it over and switch on it, but when you have Wall Street and billionaires pouring hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars into super PACs, that is not democracy. That is oligarchy. We are going to take on the oligarchs and we are going to revitalize American democracy. And when I talk about, when I talk about revitalizing American democracy, it means not only overturning this disastrous Citizens United Supreme Court decision, but it also means I am forcefully telling Republican governors and legislatures they will not continue to suppress the vote. <laughs> they are not, they are not going to pass pieces, phony pieces of legislation that essentially make it harder for people of color, for poor people, for elderly people to participate in the political process. What all of us believe in is that we've got to make it easier for people to vote, not harder for people to vote. We, we want this country, we want this country to have one of the highest levels of voter turnout, not one of the lowest. So, fighting to revitalize American democracy very, very high up on my list of priorities. But the second truth that I have to talk to you about is equally uh, unfortunate. And that is, you live in a rigged economy. It's just a fact. And the fact is that millions of people in Vermont, Minnesota, all over this country are working longer hours for lower wages. People are working two or three jobs trying to bring in enough income and health care to sustain their families. And while in America, our people now work the longest hours of any people in the industrialized world. Do you know that? Japanese are very hard-working people. We now work longer hours than the Japanese are. Despite that, mom's working, dad's working, the kids are working. 58% of all new income is going to the top 1%. That type of economy is not sustainable, is not moral, and is certainly not what America needs. So you got me ready for a radical idea? Here's the radical idea that we are going to create an economy that works for working families, not just for one percent. And the third part of what we have been talking about a lot in this campaign is the fact that our criminal justice system is broken. I want you to think about what we are asking the American people, which Secretary Clinton and I have very strong differences of opinion about, is I'm asking people to think outside the box, to think outside of the status quo. You are living today in the wealthiest country in the history of the world. Now, most people don't know that, because on the full wealth and income is going to one percent. But you have to ask yourself, why in America, in the year 2016, do we have more people in jail than any other country on earth? Shame is right. Shame is right. And just think about it for a minute. 
China is a communist authoritarian country four times our size. We have more people in jail than China. We have 2.2 million people in jail. We are spending $80 billion a year to lock up fellow Americans. Now, it's part of that insanity. We have, we have huge unemployment in this country, which is off the charts. Very few people talk about it, maybe us talk about it. But for white kids between 17 and 20 who graduated in high school, youth unemployment is 33%. For Latino kids, 36%. For African American kids, 51%. Now, you want to hear another radical idea? What do you think about having our government invest for our kids in education and jobs, not channels for
as we go along in this country, we're listening to young people. And what we are hearing from young people is how does it happen that I end up fifty hundred thousand dollars in debt for the crime of trying to get a higher education? outside of the box, take a deep breath and say, okay, everybody here knows that learning and education is an inherent part of who we are as human beings. Second of all, that if we're going to compete effectively in the global economy, we need the best educated workforce that we can develop. Why in God's name should millions of people be punished having to pay off student debt Decade after decade, for what crime did they commit? For trying to get a decent education. Makes no sense to me. And this campaign is listening to women. saying is, how does it happen that I'm sitting in an office someplace and I am making on average 79 cents on the dollar compared to the guy who's sitting next to me? That makes, again, no sense. That makes no economic sense. All that is is old-fashioned sexism. And that is why today we are going to go forward and fight for pay equity for women workers. And by the way, that gap of 79 cents to the dollar, that's the national gap. For African American women, that gap is actually much, much wider than that. We are listening in this campaign to young couples. And what the young couples are telling us is that it is very, very hard for them to obtain quality, affordable childcare. Now that's again another issue we don't talk about as a nation, but I want all of you to know what I know you already know, is that every psychologist who studies the issue tells us that the most important years of the human being's development, intellectual and emotional, is zero through four. And yet, you know, hundreds of thousands of that millions of little children sitting home right now watching dumb television shows because they're not in quality child care centers. So what we need to do is to understand that we are going to make sure that little kids, the future of this country, have the best first four years of their life that we can provide to This campaign is listening to our brothers and sisters in the African American community. And they are tired, as all of us are tired of seeing videos on television of unarmed African Americans speaking. Former mayor of Burlington, Vermont, and I've worked with police officers for many, many years. The vast majority of police officers are hardworking and honest and are trying to do a very, very difficult job. But, but like any other public official, when a police officer breaks the law, that officer must be held accountable. We have got to deal with a national tragedy, which if we do not change the system, a black male baby born today stands a one in four chance of ending up in jail. 
That is a tragedy. We are going to change that. This campaign, this campaign is listening to our Latino brothers and sisters. Me is they are tired of living in the shadows and in fear. They want a comprehensive immigration reform legislation for the past the Congress with a path toward citizenship. Our, our immigration policy must be to unite families, not Divide families. And if the Congress does not do its job, I will use the executive powers of the presidency. Just the other day, I was up in Italy. And I met, among other things, with, among other people, with uh, leaders of the Native American community. And I don't have to explain to anybody here of the very horrific history of the relationship between the United States government and the Native American people in this country. They have been lied to, they have been cheated, they have been exploited in a shameful, shameful way. And when I was up in Hibbing, and it's not different than other parts of the country, the Native American leaders talked to me about half of the kids not graduating high school, very, very high levels of substance abuse, alcoholism, kids committing suicide, high rates of unemployment. We can. You know, we owe Native Americans so, so much. We have learned so much from them in so many ways, including respect for the environment. We cannot continue current policies which are so devastating to the Native American community, that will change on those sectors. Tomorrow is Super Tuesday, and the people are entitled to know the differences, uh, somewhat profound differences that exist between Secretary Clinton and myself. I just want to rattle off a few of them. Number one, I made a decision when we began this campaign that I would not have a super PAC. I, I do not represent the interests of Wall Street, of corporate America, of the drug companies, of the fossil fuel industry, and of other powerful special interests. I don't want their money. And what we have done, what we have done in an incredible, unprecedented way, is to reach out to working families in this country and say, look, if you want real change in this country, we need to help kick in what you can. We have received in the last 10 months over 4 million individual campaign contributions. Unprecedented. Nobody, no candidate in American history at this point in the campaign has done that. And you know what the average contribution is? Because what that shows is you can run a campaign to paraphrase Lincoln against Bird of the people, by the people, and for the people.
that the American economy is not about the top one tenth of one percent. Imagine this. One tenth of one percent now owning almost as much wealth as about ninety percent. This country is not about the wealthiest twenty people owning more wealth than the bottom half of America. 150 million Americans. This country is not about, and Keith Ellison and I have worked on this, giving huge tax breaks, opposing huge tax breaks for billionaires, while Republicans want to cut Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and federal aid to education. We are going to change national priorities. We are going to invest in those people who need the help, and we're going to demand that the wealthiest people and largest corporations start paying their fair share of taxes. This campaign understands that real unemployment is close to 10%. And then when we have an infrastructure, and I was in Flint, Michigan the other day, and I will not even bother to tell you what I heard, because it was so painful, so beyond belief that this could happen in America in the year 2016. But it's not just Flint, Michigan, it's communities all over America, problems with water and wastewater, bridges, roads, airports, rail, you name it. We can create 13 million jobs rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure. That is exactly what I intend to do. This campaign is about telling Wall Street, sorry, you are never again going to destroy our economy because of your greed and recklessness and illegal behavior. We bailed out on the banks to say we're too big to fail. Well, turns out, turns out that three out of the four largest banks are today much larger than the liberal when we bailed them out to say we're too big to fail. You know what we gotta do? We gotta break them up! The Republican candidates running all over the country talking about family values. I want everybody here to know what they are talking about. Because what they are saying is that no woman in this room, in this state, in this country can have the right to control her own body. I disagree. <laughs> What they are saying is that our gay brothers and sisters should not have the right to get married. I disagree. It is the ultimate in hypocrisy for Republicans to tell us how much they hate the government to suddenly say, oh yes, we think the government at state and federal level should tell every woman in this country what she must do. That is hypocrisy. <laughs> the I've been criticized for thinking too big. Well, let me tell you a big idea. And you tell me whether it's right or wrong. In the year 2016, when we talk about public education, we cannot just talk about first grade through 12th grade. The world has changed. A college degree today, in many ways, is equivalent to what a high school degree was 50 years ago. And that is why I believe that when we talk about public education, we're talking about making public colleges and universities tuition free. I want every child in this country, regardless of his or her income, and my parents 
No one wants a college degree ever had much money. I want every kid in this, co in this country who studies hard, does their schoolwork well, to be able to get a college education regardless of the income of their families. I am criticized about every day, and that is, I happen to believe that when every major country on earth, the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Italy, Scandinavia, Canada, manages to provide health care to all of their people, we can do the same. So let me be very, very clear. No ambiguity here. I believe that health care is a right of all people, not a privilege. The Affordable Care Act, which I helped to write, has done some very good things. We have ended the so-called pre-existing condition. We have provided some health insurance to 17 million more Americans, and we've ended discrimination against women who are paying higher premiums because they were women. End of that. But, 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 today, despite the gains of the ACA, 29 million people in America have no health insurance, and many of you are underinsured with high deductibles and co -pays. yes? Further, further, we are being ripped off every day in an unconscionable way by the pharmaceutical industry that charges us the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. Why is crazy? It's crazy. One out of five Americans cannot afford to fill the prescriptions that doctors write. One out of five cannot afford to fill the prescriptions that doctors write. You go to the doctor, you get a diagnosis, and you get a prescription that you can't afford to fill. What happens when you can't afford to fill a prescription? You get sick. That is crazy. So when we have a situation where so many people are uninsured, underinsured, sky high prices and drugs, what we need to do is to understand that we pay far, far more than any other major country on earth. I don't all of that. We spend almost three times more than the British, 50% more than the French, far more than the Canadians. Now, in my view, what healthcare is about is not the insurance companies and the drug companies ripping us off and making huge profits. What healthcare is about is providing quality healthcare to all of our people in the most cost effective way. And that is why I believe we must move toward a Medicare for all healthcare system. Why I believe we will soundly defeat Mr. Trump. And that is, 
But the American people, unlike Mr. Trump, don't believe we should give hundreds of billions of dollars in tax rates to the top two tenths of one percent. The American people know what Mr. Trump does not know that we must raise the minimum wage, which is seven dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. He thinks that's fine. The American people do not. We will win because this is Trump, if you can believe it, in a Republican debate, said that he thinks wages in America are too high. I don't think that most Americans think wages are too high. They think they are much too low. We will defeat Mr. Trump because, you know, Donald Trump is the greatest of everything. You all know that. It goes without saying, and among his many other attributes, he's is one of the great scientists in the history of the world. And after years of study, he has concluded that climate change is a hoax created by the Chinese. Now, what shocked me about the statement is not that he thought climate change is a hoax, because that's what most Republicans believe. But he thought it was created by the Chinese, and I thought, surely he would have thought it was created by the Mexicans or the Muslims. But only by the Chinese. And we are going to defeat Mr. Trump because the American people do not want a president who insults in a very crude way Mexicans or Muslims. You cannot be a president of the United States insulting all of our neighbors in Latin America, one of the large religions in the world. You cannot be a president if you day after day insult women. If you have insulted African Americans by pushing this whole birth of business, trying to delegitimize the first African American president in the history of our country. President will insult John McCain and other veterans who put their lives on the line to defend us. We will defeat Mr. Trump because at the end of the day, the American people believe that bringing our people together trumps the business. Because the American people believe that community, working together, trumps selfishness. And most importantly, we will defeat Mr. Trump because the American people understand and always have that love trumps hatred. Tomorrow, Minnesota can help lead this country to a political revolution where millions of people stand together and demand a government that represents all of us, not just wealthy campaign contributors. Thank you all very much.
Aloha, I'm Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. As a veteran of two Middle East deployments, I know firsthand the cost of war. I know how important it is that our Commander-in-Chief has the sound judgment required to know when to use America's military power and when not to use that power. As a Vice Chair of the DNC, I'm required to stay neutral in Democratic primaries, but I cannot remain neutral any longer. The stakes are just too high. That's why today I'm endorsing Senator Bernie Sanders to be our next President and Commander-in-Chief of the United States. We need a Commander-in-Chief who has foresight, who exercises good judgment, and who understands the need for a robust foreign policy which defends the safety and security of the American people, and who will not waste precious lives and money on interventionist wars of regime change. Such counterproductive wars undermine our national security and economic prosperity. As these elections continue across the country, the American people are faced with a very clear choice. We can elect a president who will lead us into more interventionist wars of regime change, or we can elect a president who will usher in a new era of peace and prosperity. It's with this clear choice in mind that I'm resigning as vice chair of the DNC so that I can strongly support Bernie Sanders as the Democratic nominee for president of the United States. And now I ask you, stand with me and support Bernie Sanders. <laughs>